me, the Holt. Listen to them, the children of the night, what music they make. Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we have my October wrap up. So I had a very, very ambitious October TBR. Like I had 38 books on there. Some of the books I took off, some books I added, but didn't quite hit the 38 mark, but I'm still very, very pleased with what I did. Um, there was a couple books I could have probably pushed through to get to the 38 but I just wanted to kind of relax and enjoy myself for the last little bit of the month because it was quite a reading month for me, for sure. I did, of course, do weekly updates where I was doing um, daily kind of thoughts where I'd get on and I would say what I was planning on reading and then the next day I would update you guys on what I actually read and then what I was planning on reading for that day. So if you're interested in kind of more of a look at how I broke everything down, definitely go check out those videos. But yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with what I accomplished. You also might have noticed at the beginning of this video I gave you guys a quote. Definitely head down to the comments and let me know where that quote's from, the book and the author. And then if you want extra bonus points, you can name the character that said the quote. Now, the points don't matter. This is just purely for fun. I used to be really obsessed with quotes. Like I had a binder and I would see a quote I like and I would write it down in my binder. I'm sure I still have it somewhere, but I couldn't tell you where. Uh, and so I thought this would kind of be fun. And so the way this is going to work, I'll give you a quote at the beginning of the video that will correspond to one of the books in the video, one of the books I'm talking about um, in some way. It might not actually be that book, but it might be a book that has ties to that book um, or, you know, ties to a book in the list. Um, we'll see kind of going forward how I, I do it. I think this first quote's pretty easy, um, but if you do need hints, there will be a pinned comment down below, and in that, the comment of the pinned comment, um, I'll put hints so that way if you need them you can go but they're not just right there in case you don't want any uh, hints at all. So definitely head on down and let me know the book, the author, and then if you want a little bonus point you can name the character as well. I will give the answer in the next video. So I don't have a regular schedule. I kind of do videos um, as I have stuff to make videos about so as I do my reads and such um and so just make sure you have the bell notification on so you notify when I do upload and then that way you'll see the answer and get the next quote um but yeah I'm really excited to start doing this like I said I love quotes and so we'll see how it goes and if it works out I'll continue to do it but let's go ahead and get into my wrap up um, so originally I had 38 books, like I said, but I removed the Dresden Files. I just was not feeling them. Um, I got really burnt out on that whole series. I was really trying to complete it this year, but since I wasn't able to, I'm not going to worry about them anymore. I'll resume and finish off the series in the new year. Um, I definitely needed a big break from it, and so it's kind of a relief to not have to worry about that series. For the rest of the year, I can just relax and do some fun things that I have planned. So there's those, and then there's some books that I just didn't get to. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and um, I guess let's start with the audiobooks. That way I don't forget them. I actually made a list this time. I normally just talk about the books, but I had so many audiobooks, and I also had two library books, and I always forget to mention them because they're not right in front of me. So we'll start with the audiobooks. So first up, I did Impact Winter by Travis Beecham. Now, this was a full cast audio, and it was so immersive and so much fun. I chose this book specifically um, because I needed a dystopian or post-apocalyptic book for Amy at Ace Star Reads Bingo Board, which I did do a video. I got a blackout on the bingo board. Um, not surprised with all the books I had, but so I needed that for that space, and I chose this one because it was only four hours and 59 minutes, so about five hours, 
There's not a physical copy of this book. This is only audio, so I don't have a page count for it. But that one was a lot of fun. You basically, a comet came and hit Earth and basically turned full winter. Um, and you have these vampire, there's different levels of vampires, and then you have like this group of survivors, um, and one of which is kind of like the main character. So it was a lot of fun. I love the full cast. I'm definitely going to be trying to find more full class audio, um, because I'm not a big audio book person, but I'm kind of finding myself enjoying it more and more. Um, and so, so yeah. There was that one. And then I listened to Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. Sam at Greetings and Sam. Um, she has been singing the praises for this book. And I had a credit, so I ended up going with getting it on audio. I do want to get the physical copy. Fiction books I have a hard time with when it's audio. Um, I just have a hard time following the story. Even so, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I thought it was fun. You had two different voices. Um, one for the main female lead and one for the main male lead uh, or character. And so that was kind of interesting because you knew whose perspective it was based on that. Um, but it was just those two narrators and... The narrators were Dan Callie, I think, and Esther Wayne. Um, this book was 15 hours and 32 minutes. And if I had read the physical copy, it would have been 520 pages. So really did enjoy it. You basically have the main character. Um, I'm not, because I can't see the name, I'm not, like, good at just physically listening and hearing it. But she basically gets sold into slavery when she's young um, and then she escapes and kind of makes a deal to help these people in order to help her family. And she has to take on like this ancient, like very strong magic and such and become an apprentice with the male lead um, and very slow burn, but feelings, of course, develop and such. And it was just, it was a good time, but like I said, I really need to... I'm not comfortable talking too much about it because I need the physical book to really understand, you know, what I was listening to, but I definitely top of the list to get a physical copy for sure. Then I needed just some little ones to fill out the bingo board so I could get a blackout. So I listened to Clifford at the Circus for Circus or Clown. This is by Norman Bridwell. Narrator was Stephanie D'Abruzzo. Um, it was only four minutes long, really short, because Clifford, you know, picture books. Um, but the page count would have been 32 pages. And it was really cute. Like, even listening to it, it was just cute. Obviously, it would have been more enjoyable if I had a physical copy and could look at the pictures. But it was still really cute. And then for, I needed a zombie book, so I listened to Septic Zombie by Akila Robinson. She was seven at the time she wrote this book. Um, and it shows, but it was... I mean, it was just fun. You had a rock star zombie, a ballerina zombie. Um, you had, like, <laughs> I think aliens, if I remember right. It was just fun. Um, and it was narrated by R.C. Bray. It was 20 minutes, and page count, if I had gotten a physical copy, would have been 28 pages. And then I listened to Body Snatchers, because I need a creepy crawly book. Um, this is by, it's Body Snatchers, Flies, Wasps, and other, um, Creepy Crawly Zombie Makers by Joan Axelrod Contrada. The narrator was anonymous. It was 23 minutes and physical copy would be a total of 32 pages. Um, and it was a nonfiction and about, you know, insects and such that use other insects um, for their young and kind of the young take over the body. They're like parasitic. So really interesting. I love that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed that one as well. As far as physical books go, first up we have Death Note Black Edition Volume 1 by Sugumi Oba and Tahishi Obata. So this one um, was a rollover from September and perfect for October, perfect start. 
this was my first manga and overall I did enjoy this um, but basically you have light and he finds um, a death note which is a notebook dropped by a Shinigami death god and he decides that he's going to kind of rid the world of evil. I did also watch the Netflix movie adaptation, um, which was kind of a letdown. I watched it before reading this and enjoyed it at first, but they did not honor like culture or anything like it. They Americanized it and made it more teen romance drama. But this one was fun for my first manga. Still don't think I'm going to be a big manga person, but it was still really fun. Then I read Never Say Boo to a Ghost and Other Haunting Rhymes by John Foster and Corky Paul. This is just a bunch of like little rhymes and such, like spooky. Um, kind of a letdown. A lot of them didn't even make sense. And it was my husband's book and I thought, oh, it's Halloween, it's spooky season. I'll add it on there. Then I read Trick or Treat Little Critter by Gina and Mercer Mayer. This one, again, just a short little picture book. And this one was a lot of fun. Um, very cute. Perfect for the season. Then I read Edgar Allan Poe's Tales of Mystery and Madness, illustrated by Chris Grimley. So this has... The Black Cat, The Masquerade of the Red Death, Hot Frog, and The Fall of the House of Usher. Um, but then it's all, like, illustrated, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I did enjoy this. I haven't really read a whole lot of Poe. I remember, like, in my teens, I think I read The Raven um, and maybe another one, but not really familiar with a lot of his work. So um, this was kind of fun and a good introduction, I think, especially with all the pictures. And then last of week one, I finished it off with Dracula by Bram Stoker. This took me way too long to read. Way too long. Um, I think it's the edition I had, and I was enjoying it at first. But the writing, the font is so tiny, so packed in there. The pages are, like, so thin. It just didn't feel like I was making any progress at, on it at all. Um, and so I do want to try to give this another read but I want to try to get a different edition that has bigger font and maybe it will feel like I'm actually making progress. Um, so that was kind of frustrating because I did kind of like it, but at the same time it was like, I didn't feel like I was making my way through it at all. So that was week one. I did also have spillovers from September um, that I read like the first three days of the month. So, you know, even though it doesn't seem like I read a whole lot, there was also two other books I was finishing up. So week two, I started with The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. Um, I had never read this. I watched the movie and read this, and I really enjoyed this. You have, um, I forget the name of the guy, but he basically um, finds himself on this island, and Dr. Moreau is creating like these human beast hybrids essentially um and so very spooky I enjoyed both the movie and this honestly was was pretty pleased with both of those um and then we have Mother's Helper by A. Bates so I had a bunch of these little teen horror books that my sister had given me I think there were 16 of these all in total and so I thought perfect to read them during the month of October and so that's what I did so this one you have Becky and she takes a job um, basically as a nanny for this woman and uh, they're kind of in hiding and Becky doesn't have the full answers um, as to why they're in hiding um, and so it's all kind of mysterious and then you know Dolls, broken dolls keep showing up on the doorstep and, and whatnot, and there's kind of a twist at the end. This one, after reading some of the other ones, this one was a little bit more fun than some of the other ones, but the logic behind it wasn't quite there. Um, so it was it was fun. It was a good time, but there was others that were worse and others that were better. Then I read Practical Magic, which I don't have because it was a library book. Um, by Alice Hoffman on that one. I also watched the movie because the movie is one of my favorite. Had never read the book. And I did 
very, very different from the movie, which I had heard. I heard that it doesn't follow the movie or the movie doesn't follow it um, at all. Like, you can see, like, the framework that was similar in both, but two different directions. And I enjoyed both. Like, the movie's still one of my all-time favorites, but I did enjoy the book as well for what it was. And then I read, let's see, The Dead Game by A. Bates also. I only have the two A. Bates. This one was definitely better than Mother's Helper. Um, and this one you have Lenny, me, and Jackson. And they end up kind of doing this game with each other. Um, and they're supposed to kill, which just means embarrassing some of the, their like rivals or people that have not been such good classmates essentially only it takes a more sinister turn um and so this one was a lot better than mother's helper uh again some of the logic it's like well why but you know it's a it's a teen drama what do you what do you want or horror uh and then after that i read the midnight club by christopher pike i have not finished the series yet it is very heavy and I just haven't been in the mood to finish it I think I have like three episodes left um but basically you have a group of terminally ill teens and they meet at midnight and tell scary stories to each other so very very heavy um but this is also probably one of my favorites out of the teen horror as well um and the show I'm really really enjoying the show definitely develops more there's more characters and it has kind of like a backstory that like this mystery that they're trying to solve and more of a sinister feel with this one the only horror aspect is really the stories that they're telling not so much the main story itself so that is that one and then I read Halloween Night um by R.L. Stein. so this one you have Brenda and her cousin Haley is staying with them um, and she does not like Haley and so they're having to write this murder mystery for school um, her and her two friends and she decides she's going to kill Haley and starts planning it and then it kind of takes a turn from there of course so that one again the logic was like not quite there but it was all right. And then I read Rules of Magic, which is um, a prequel to Practical Magic. It follows the aunts. Uh, again, I don't have it because it was a library book, but of course the picture is here. And that one, I did really enjoy it as well. Um, the thing that frustrated me with that one was it was written after Practical Magic, but it's a prequel to it. And... It didn't follow some of the things that were put in Practical Magic. Um, like, there's this whole thing. They have the one ant and I think it's Sally have an affinity with birds. But every year a sparrow comes in and in Practical Magic they're having to chase it out. Where in Rules of Magic they're able to just call it down and let it free. Um, also, the love story for the ants. Like, it's alluded to in Practical Magic about these two brothers that got struck by lightning. Um, and that was their love and they never fell in love again which in rules of magic that wasn't the case like there were two other boys those two that got struck by lightning were like minuscule the one sister hadn't even met them yet you know and so little inconsistencies like that was a little bit frustrating but I did like the story itself if I had read it not reading practical magic I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more um but it was what it was and then last of week two I read Road to Nowhere by Christopher Pike. In this one, you have Teresa, and she has run away, and she picks up these two hitchhikers, and they're kind of telling stories back and forth to each other. Um, and so, yeah, that one was... Actually, I really enjoyed this one. I think out of all the Midnight Club and this one were definitely some of the top ones. I will say Christopher Pike develops his stories more than the R.L. Stein teen horrors or the A. Bait teen horrors. Um, there's a lot more depth to these ones and the logic makes a little bit more sense in these ones. Um, I think it's just the author. Uh, so I did enjoy that one. So that was week two and then we're on to week three. 
So first up, I read The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. This is definitely the standout of the month for me. I really, really enjoyed this. I figured I would enjoy this author. This was my first T. King Fisher. Um, but basically, you have Tara, and she's newly divorced. She ends up going back to live with her uncle in his Museum of Natural Wonders, Curiosities, and Taxidermy. And she finds, like, this hole in the wall, and it leads to to like this other world dimension reality type place um and the monsters there it's like they can hear you think and pray they're not hungry I just I loved everything about this book I love the writing style I love the premise of it um I don't get scared very easily this one it didn't like outright scare me but it's kind of an insidious creep um, that lingered after reading it. Like, I really, really enjoyed this book. Definitely, if you haven't tried this author, I mean, I can't speak for the other books. This is the first one I read, but I really enjoyed this one for sure. So there's that one. Then I read Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Also, first time trying V.E. Schwab. And another one that I really, really loved. I did mark this one quote in this one. Um, obviously not the quote I use, so I can share it, but it says, um, let me find it here. If I can get my fingers to work. There is no rest and sleep. These dreams will be the death of me. And I really, really felt that because, um, I struggle with sleep. And when I do sleep, I tend to have like vivid dreams, but this follows Olivia and she is like, there's She's in the school for girls and she gets a letter um, to come back to Gallant. And she has her mother's journal and it basically says never go to Gallant. But she gets this letter and it seems to be from her uncle. Um, and she goes to Gallant and there's kind of something going on with Gallant as well. There's a darkness um, that is affecting the place and her cousin like is angry that she came and wants her gone and so she's kind of having to discover the mystery of what's going on really really enjoyed this one as well um and then next we have beach house by rl stein again the logic of this just wasn't there this one you have two old timelines um so you have the summer of i think 1956 and then the current summer and it kind of goes back and forth between the summer and there's these deaths that are happening. So there's that one. And then we have Christopher Pike, Master of Murder. This one was probably the one that lacked logic the most, but still pretty well developed. You have Marvin and he is a writer, um, but nobody knows who he is because he keeps it a secret because he's in high school and he doesn't want you know, that to affect things or whatever. He writes murder mysteries, um, but somebody has figured out his identity. He starts getting notes. And then this other girl that he used to date, um, their, her, his competition for her had died. Um, and she thinks it's a murder. So she's trying to get him to help her solve that. Um, so yeah, logic on this one was a little rocky, but still, Pretty well developed and pretty fun, for sure. And then I read The Inferno by Dante, um, which was my first time actually reading this. And a little bit over my head, I'm not going to lie, but still really enjoyed it. And it does have, like, pictures in here, which were so much fun. I mean, just not fun, but interesting, I guess, to look at. Like, really added to everything, I think. Um, and I luckily, with this one, there was, like, a summary of each canto. Um, and so I was able to look at those uh, and get an idea. So it wasn't quite so over my head um, because I knew what, what it was talking about from that. So that one I was really happy to have read. Then I read The Third Horror by R.L. Stein. And this one you have Cody and she comes back to 99 Fear Street. Um, to find her dead sister ghost, Callie. Um, but there's something kind of darker going on, too. They're supposed to be shooting a movie, but things keep going wrong. So, that one was, again, alright. Logic was a little shaky yet again. 
Um, and then we have Chain Letter to the Ancient Evil by Christopher Pike. Again, the logic on this one was a little bit eh. Um, but this was second in the series, which might have been part of it. <laughs> but you have this group, and in the first one, they were receiving chain letters and the guy that they thought were was sending them um, ended up dying, I guess, in the first one. But this one, they're getting letters again. So now they're like, what's going on? Like, he's not alive anymore. What's happening? And so they're trying to figure out what's going on in the chain letters. Basically, they have to do something or they're going to die. So um, that one, eh, that was probably my least favorite out of the Christopher Pike ones. Uh, and then this one I added on just for the bingo board. It was The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena by R.L. Stein. This is, of course, the Goosebumps book, so his younger audience um, than the teen. This is more middle grade. Um, and this one you have Jordan and his sister Nicole, and their father's a photographer. He gets hired to try to shoot this abominable snowman, and so they go up with him, um, and they end up finding him. And bringing him back to Pasadena. So <laughs> that one again was rough, but not too bad, I would say. Uh, and then we're on to week three, uh, or four rather. Sorry, lost count. So now we're on to week four. Um, so this one was a lot of the other teen horrors and my Stephen King. So we have The Snowman by R.L. Stein, And this one you have Heather. Um, and she's basically like Cinderella. Um, rich girl living with her uncle. And he's kind of abusive and won't let her have access to any of her money. Makes her work but won't let her have access to the money she works for either. And she meets this guy. Um, I forget his name, um, but he's called the snowman, um, and so she meets him, but, uh, kind of gets bamboozled and is kind of stuck with this toxic guy. So, that one, eh, was probably one of my least favorites. Then I read The Dead Girlfriend, and so you have Annie, and she just moves to town, and she meets Jonathan, um, and uh, she doesn't know about his last girlfriend, who happens to be dead, uh, and so there's kind of a mystery about how she died, and Annie is getting these threats and such, and so she might be in danger as well. Um, that one wasn't too bad. Um, probably one of the better teen horrors from Arl Stein, but still kind of not as well developed, lacking a little bit in logic. Then I read Final Friends, book one, The Party by Christopher Pike. Um, this one, you have Jessica and Sarah and Polly and Alice, you have this whole group. Um, and basically you have two high schools that ended up getting combined. And so Alice and Polly, their sisters, and Alice decides to throw a party with like 30 kids from the old school and 30 kids from the new school to combine them. And so that way they can kind of mingle and they're not so separated in school itself. Um, but something happens at the party. This one, really, really slow. Everything kind of happens at the end. And then you're left hanging until you read the next two books. So again, not my favorite out of the group. But it was all right. Then I read Stephen King's Salem's Lot. So I am not a Stephen King fan. I've said it over and over and over. So by now you should know. This one I actually did enjoy. It still had moments where you go off on a tangent. And it's like, what are you doing? Um, but overall, I really like the premise of the story. Um, I like the story itself. It is a bit dated, like the tone is a little bit derogatory um, at some points, but it was written like 1970 something, I believe, 75 or something like that. And so, you know, it's kind of understandable, but it's also a little bit disappointing because it's like, it, <laughs> that just that tone kind of gets under your skin a little bit. So, um, let's see if I can, yeah, 1975, so, um, but definitely going to be holding on to this one. I can see myself rereading it. I do want to watch the movie 
Um, but we'll see. I know there's an older movie, and then I think I don't know if this is like the new movie's out yet or what because I got this at Walmart recently. Um, and so I'll definitely have to check into that, and I'll probably watch the old movie and the new one as well. But that is Salem's Lot. Then I read The Babysitter 3 by Arl Stein. Um, this one you have Jenny and um, she. there was this guy that was killing babysitters. And then in this one she goes to visit her co cousin Deborah to kind of get away from it. Um, and then Deborah starts receiving these calls and such. So again the logic behind this one was like ugh. But the story itself. I kind of enjoyed, um, probably because there was horses in it, <laughs> so, you know, I'm a sucker for horses. Then I read The Dare by R.L. Stein, and this one you have Johanna, um, and she wants to be part of this rich group. She's a junior, they're seniors, um, and she's attracted to Dennis, um, and so they kind of dare her, uh, to kill their teacher, um, because they're having a lot of problems with this teacher, and she's his neighbor and so she kind of feels like she's part of the group this one was probably the most believable there was some logic lacking I will say that like there's one thing with the teacher that it's very obvious it was put there um for a twist later on um but otherwise like I could see this made me kind of think like even though it's not the same um there's a story of the two girls who killed their other friend like a true story um, and it kind of just made me think, like, there's sometimes there's teenagers that will, like, do stuff like that. So this one was probably the most believable, but there's still a little bit of logic that was lacking in that one as well. Then I read The Last Vampire 2, Black Blood by Christopher Pike. The premise of this one is really interesting because you have Alyssa and Ray, and they're, like, the last two vampires. And Alyssa and her, like, mentor, like, I guess had to kill vampires. Like, I didn't read the first one, obviously. This is the second in the series. Um, but the premise is that there's not supposed to be any more vampires made. And you're supposed to kill off all the vampires. Which I actually really enjoyed that premise. Um, and I thought this one was actually pretty well developed and everything. So this one I did enjoy. For sure. Um, and then lastly, probably my favorite Arl Stein teen horror is Goodnight Kiss. This has Goodnight Kiss 1 and 2 and then a little short story called The Vampire Club. Um, and in this one, you have Matt and April in the first one. And there's these two vampires that have kind of a bet of whoever can turn their prey into an eternal one. Um, first, and then that continues on into the second one with a different set of vampires and, um, group of kids, but it does have ties to the first one, which you'll learn about. And then the vampire club, basically there's this vampire club at school. Everybody has to be part of a club and this new kid kind of gets tricked and he thinks that this kid is a vampire because they prank him. Um, and the initiation to get into the club is to kill this vampire. So, um, 18 page long, like short story, um, pretty, pretty good for being so short. So that was week four. And then I had three days left in the month. Um, Friday, I did not read at all. I was on the computer all day. I did not read at all. Saturday, like I said, I ended up playing Dead by Daylight. And so I did end up starting, uh, Scythe. Uh, yeah, Scythe. I did not finish this until Sunday. I spent most of the day Sunday reading this. Um, and this one is another standout. The Hall Places and this one are my top two for the month. I don't know what I was expecting going into this, but I love this book so much. Like, I, it was really well developed. There were twists that I did not see coming, like, love this. I actually just ordered the next two off of the books um, because I enjoyed this one so much. I was like, I have to get the rest of the series. My husband got a little gift card from work for good customer service, 
And so he spent half on his game and then gave me the rest. And so I ordered the next two in the series. And I can't wait till they come and I can't wait to read them. Um, but basically in this one you have humans are, are immortal now. Um, there's no disease. Uh, there's no killing. If somebody gets deadish, they're revived. And in order to keep, you know, population balance, you have these scythes uh, who kill uh, people. And so you have Citra and Rowan, and they end up becoming apprentice scythes. Um, and then there's kind of a little twist from there. And it was just so well developed. I loved the atmosphere of it. I love the twist. Um, it just, it was really, really good. And I enjoyed the writing. Like, this is a new favorite for sure. And I can't wait to get the other two. And this is by Neil Shusterman. Um, so there's that one. And then this one, I still have about 100 pages to go. I will finish this tonight. So it's counting. And that's Morgan's Cross by Nora Roberts. This is book one in the Circle Trilogy. Um, and so in this one, you have the Circle of Six. You have Lilith, who is an ancient vampire. And then she's kind of amassing an army. Excuse me. And so you have the goddess Morgan, and she calls the Circle of Six, who are the main circle that's going to fight Lilith. Um, and so you have Hoyt, the sorcerer, and his brother, Kian. I was pronouncing that wrong before. Luckily, with her books, there's actually a glossary at the end, and it has the characters, and it has the pronunciation of stuff. So that was really nice. But so Kian is Hoyt's twin brother who gets turned by Will Lilith. So she's a vampire. And you'll have this time travel because Hoyt comes from like um, the 12th century and time travels to the current time um, where his brother has lived all these years. And then you have a witch, Glenna, who's from the current time. And then you have Mara and Larkin who come from a different world um, and travel to be part of the circle. And then you also have a warrior. Um, so you have a sorcerer, a witch, um, a scholar, a vampire, shapeshifter, and then the warrior. So uh, I read this before. The atmosphere is perfect. I'm going to finish this one up tonight. I'm not going to have time to get to the next two, obviously. Um, there's just, unless I like really push myself, which isn't happening. So these are going to roll over into uh, November. And then we have Dance of the Gods and Valley of Silence. So those are going to roll over. I also read almost half of Duncan Wood by William Horwood. This is basically about moles. This book, like so many emotions. <laughs> I did not expect I mean, I expected to enjoy this, but I did not expect how well written it, it was. Um, and so I read 280 pages out of 582. Um, and so I read the first two parts. And this will roll over the second half. I did count the 280 pages I read for um, October's count. And then I'll count the remaining, what, 302 pages for uh, November, but that's going to continue on into November. And then the other two books that I did not get to are my ABC Author Challenge books. So we have The Lost Book of Moses by Shannon Tagay. Um, so this will roll over. And then we have Exodus Revisited by Leah Nuris, which will also roll over. Uh, just didn't have time for those, which isn't a huge deal. But um so yeah, that is my reading month. I know this video is long, but there was a lot of books to talk about. If you've read any of these, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And let me know what your favorite book of October was. Because, like I said, Scythe and Hollow Places, the Hollow Places, were by far my favorites. And I really enjoyed Salem's Lot. I was glad to read that. I mean, just a lot of good books this month and I'm really happy with what I got accomplished. I know this video is longer so I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. Don't forget to go down in the comments and guess the quote. Um, it has something to do with one of the books I mentioned which should be pretty obvious I think. 
uh, and then check back tomorrow because I'll be doing my November TBR and I'll let you know the answer uh, and I'll give you a new quote as well. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy reading everyone. Bye.